Hey guys, so it is Saturday and I haven't vlogged at all this week because today Dean and I are working on the front garden bed to get um, some of the plants in, get some plants moved, get mulch in, get gravel in, different things like that. And I wanted to take you guys along with me as we work on this project today and show you what we're doing and kind of give you a vision of my uh, design ideas, I guess. Um, and then I'm gonna go prune my rose bush later and I'll take you with me as I do that. Now, let me think here. Dean went to town this morning and he bought a truckload of mulch. He got some little white kind of gravel that we have in one of our front beds I've shown before on some of my vlogs. And we're gonna pull that into this front bed. And he bought some bird seed to fill our bird feeders. And let me think what else he got. Oh, some compost to put in the holes when we put our plants in. So in my last video, last one or two videos, I showed this front garden bed and I talked about what we were gonna do. Um, so you can go back and watch that if you wanna see that or you can just watch this one today and see what we've already done and kind of what the plan is. So anyway, Dean went outside the other day and he dug holes for me so that I didn't have to dig the holes. So he's gonna come around and we're gonna fill each of the holes with compost, get our bigger um, plants in. I'm not sure what I'm calling these. I guess like structure plants. They're in the back of the bed and they'll provide a lot of height um, and they have a lot of winter interest. So some of them are conifers and they'll stay green all winter. And then two of them are these little Bobo limelight hydrangeas. They're like a little small dwarf size hydrangea and they will hold their dried petals all winter long. So it kind of gives your garden something in the winter. So anyway, we are gonna get that done first. Then we're gonna move some hostas and then we're gonna put mulch all over the bed then we're gonna do the gravel and bring in some bigger landscaping rocks that we will eventually put plants around when there is no danger of frost anymore. So we're gonna get started on that. I'm gonna go find my hubby. He's disappeared on me somewhere. I hear Charlie. <laughs> I was looking, looking for you. What are you doing? Oh, I was looking for a better piece of bow and arrow for the boys. Oh, okay. I thought you were clearing stuff over there where you were going to yeah. kill, kill my little... That too. Do what? I saw that burn pile and I thought I should just burn that too while we're out here. Mm, pond looks pretty right now. There's Charlie. In the mud. That's where he likes to live. Charlie! What are you doing? You me trying to jump? Huh? Did you take me trying to jump? No. In my work I missed it. I missed oh, your sorry, you I missed your jump. <laughs> 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 Okay, so all of these structure plants are in the ground. They all have some soil conditioner under them and I've kind of spread the clumps of dirt out so there aren't so many big piles of dirt everywhere. All right, so the next step is to move hostas. Now, in this bed, let me show you real quick. 
Okay, right here you can see we have, I can't remember what this is called. I have it on my plant app, but it grows these really pretty yellow flowers. I'm gonna have to actually dig this out and move it because I don't want any yellow in this bed. But um, right here underneath of it, you can see there's a hosta starting to grow. So here's the new growth. And we have a bunch of hostas in this bed. You can see even all the way over here, it's starting to send up its little shoots. So let me go over here's one. Now this one is not growing as quickly as the other one. Now you can see right here, there are some little purple, these are like where the leaves will bloom from. They're starting to come out, but most of it looks like this, dried and brown. But anyway, you can see how big this is. Let me get up here. It's like right through here, all the way up to there all the way over here and all the way down to there. So I have to cut this whole thing out with the shovel and then I'll probably divide it into four big clumps and then I will do the exact same thing for the other hostas that are down the bed. Actually, look at this one. Right beside of this big piece, there's another one right here. You can see the brown right there and all the way up through there. It's like all over the place right here. So I have to dig all of these out there's another one down there that's kind of got the real red one. So they're different varieties of hostas. One is solid green, one is green with a white stripe up the center, and then there's another type in here that's green with um, a white stripe around the margin of the leaf. So what I'm gonna do when I get all these hostas out, I'll show you, but my plan is to set them over here in the grass and I'm gonna kind of mix them up so I don't know what's what. And then I'm gonna plant them in between this plant and this plant, they're gonna be like right here in the center, kind of in a triangle pattern. And I'll do that in between each of the two big plants. So that we'll have some hostas in the center because they die back in the winter. So I'm thinking they should go in between the two big plants that stay up during winter. Okay, you guys, it is getting really hot out here. I've shed my hoodie, I pulled my hair up into a clip, and I've gone inside to get some water kefir. I have dug three of the hostas out, and I have two more to go, and I'm about done for. They are like really in the ground. They're so old and so big and so well rooted, it's very difficult to get them out. So, anyway, I'm actually gonna walk back and see what Dean's doing. He has his tractor out. I think he's gonna burn a big pile of brush, and he got um, a tiller for Christmas from his mom and dad that goes on the back of the tractor. And I have this area in the back back here um, that I want him to till up for me so I can make like a cut flower garden back there. So I'm gonna go show him where that's at and then I will come back and dig some more hostas. <laughs> so I've given up on digging. Given up on digging? Given up on digging these hostas out. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've given up for now, anyway. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Hey, Mom. Hi, Ezra. I'm on camera. I'm, this is my cool walk now. Hey, Dad. Yeah. Mom stacked all that up. You did great, man. I mean, Mom should show that on video. Ezra wow. Up. Yeah. That looks like you could start a campfire under there. Yeah. Great job, Ez. Hey. Are you helping Daddy today? Mm. Yeah. Where did all of this brush come from? Oh, this was here before we got here. Oh, really? Just like dead stuff falling and piled together? I mean, you, this is crazy. Look at the soil here. Like, this the is soil. where our garden is. <laughs> yeah. This, this is far from our house. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to keep the deer out. But still. It's like I kind of dug around it just so the fire wouldn't spread, but I was thinking, yeah, this soil is awesome. Hmm. <sighs> 
Okay, so this is, um, well, I guess where your tractor's at, you know where I mow that line that goes to the creek? Right. I was thinking everything, like from there down would be the, where you tilled, and I put the flowers, and then from where I mow right here where Ezra's at, like all the way up that way. Is that like a good plan? So just take your tiller and I guess make a really big path. Sunny and then today. I just need to buy a bunch of seeds. Mom, Let's see what we can do. It's sunny today. Throw and grow. It is. I think a lot of the fresh cut flower kind of plants you can directly sow the seed in. So we're going to try that and see how it goes. So the boys caught field mouse back where we were burning stuff. <laughs> Ooh. And he tried to crawl in the burn pile. Look how Looking fat for he some... is. He's so cute. That's the kind of fat. Yeah. Gus. That's what his box so he doesn't try to Name him Fat Gus. Yeah, Fat, fat Gus. Gus. From that YouTube. That Mark Rober. <laughs> that squirrel. Hey, Charlie, look at this. It may be a girl and she may be pregnant. Oh, probably not. Oh, well, she may be. You may want to find her. You have to keep her if she was pregnant. No, you can find her a new nest. Yeah, mm -hmm. just, like, just like... It'd be better to let her go if she's yeah. pregnant. Yeah. Well, look how chubby she is. if she was pregnant, mm -hmm. I would want to let her go here because this looks like easy... This easy looks like a soil. great it's... spot. Well, but she probably would prefer to be back there with the brush, way back in there. Mm -hmm. Where she can hide and not near the house where Ollie's at. Because Ollie no, would I, love I, the fat I've mouse. seen Oliver crawling Ollie, back in. Yeah. I mean, look at him over there. Look at him. Oliver, look at I Oliver. smell no. blood. He knows. Oliver, I smell blood. He's a good boy, but he doesn't like something we don't. All right. It's cute. Okay, so here are some of the hosta divisions that I've dug out over there. Or some others by those rocks. I've already put all of them in except for one, but I'm going to show you right here what I did, if you can see them. So right there is one, there's one, and over there's one. Ugh, so I've been digging crazy amounts of holes. Anyway, so the ones in the back are the same kind, and then the one in the front is the same kind. Isaiah is helping put mulch on that side of the bed, and then I will add two additional hostas over here when I get this gravel water pathway thing dug. So he's helping shovel mulch, and then we'll spread it out. I've got one more hosta to dig in over here, and we should be done, and I'll help with mulch then. Here is the semi-finished product. This will allow the water to pour out of that drain, and I'll probably clean the end of it and do something to make it look semi-nice. Another thing that I may do is, I don't know if you guys can see this because of the sun, but I may have Dean take that entire drain pipe off and put a rain chain right there. So the rain chain will just hang, and then everything will drip off right into that little gutter looking kind of thing. That would be really pretty. I think that's a good idea. Maybe that's what we'll do. Okay, uh, I think we are done for the day. Um, we have all the big plants in. We have the hostas put in where they go, all the mulch is spread, and the landscaping rocks are in, and then the little drainage ditch with the tiny little pebbles are in. So I'm gonna flip the camera around. I'm gonna show you what we have right now, and there really won't be anything else we can do until probably like late April, maybe even early May, depending on how the weather, like um, when they predict the last frost will be. I think it's probably sometime in April. Anyway, when that happens, I can get my foxgloves and corabels and I don't know just a bunch of other plants that 
we've got to wait till the frost pass to get those so anyway I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you guys what all the boys and I did today okay so you can see this side of the garden bed isn't finished because we have to get more railroad timbers and cut them and put them there move some of that dirt on the end and we're gonna put some sort of like tree something tall in the corner of the house right there anyway so we have plants lots of mulch and landscape rocks and like I said you can't see the hostas right now because they are covered in mulch and there's the little ditch where the drain is and I did talk to Dean and he thought it would be a good idea also to get a rain chain let me get past his truck here and there is that side so you can tell this mulch is fresh it looks a lot different from the mulch over there but it'll kind of lose its color after a bit oh okay so I am so tired so so tired anyway um, I'm gonna go see what Dean is up to he's been moving trees cutting things out over there by our other pond we've like four ponds on our property so he's like he's back at the second pond anyway this looks really good I'm really happy with how this is looking and I'm excited for the last frost to pass so that we can get more plants in. These two were superstar helpers. Isaiah spread a ton of mulch down here in the beds and Uriah was up in Dean's truck kind of shoveling mulch down to us so we could spread it. So anyway, let's go see what Dean's doing. Okay, so the last thing that I had on my to-do list today was come over here and trim my rose bush, which you can see it right over there, um, over here in this garden that we planted last year by the shop. Um, things are starting to pop back up in the garden, like the creeping Jenny starting to come through the mulch where we covered it last fall when we put the bed or the garden to bed for winter. We covered everything with a thick layer of mulch. So the creeping Jenny's popping up. There's a hosta popping up right there. Daffodils, I think. Those are some sort of tulips. Um, these here are paper whites. They're like dying back. They've already bloomed and so they're dying back. But these are tulips and I think those two things right there are tulips. Um, I need to find some sort of like a yellow plant or a blue plant for back there later on. Anyway, I have to weed the pathway, but some of this is like a carpet kind of plant that grows and makes like a little carpety cushion thing. And then you can see some tulips are popping up around the bird bath. And there's another hosta popping up where the bird bath is at. My foxgloves are leafing out. That one you can barely see it. It's way back there. And then I've got a delphinium that's doing nothing back behind this rose bush. More um, daylilies over there. And our little Alberta spruce, who's going to take a while to get to be really big. Anyway, so this rose is a David Austin rose. It's a bright yellow beautiful lemon scented rose it's called the poet's wife and this is my second year that it will be its second bloom season and i am going to prune it today i've watched some youtube videos on how to prune these things and i watched david austin's videos on how to prune so i'm going to try it um i don't know if you guys can see it's starting to leaf out so this is the time to prune it and you are supposed to prune everything out of the middle so that it's kind of like, I guess like a cup, like you get everything out of the middle. But right here, you can see where the rose is growing right here out of the rocks and I'm gonna trim that off. I'm supposed to cut it back, I think by about a third is what they said. Okay, so it looks, it'll look really kind of pitiful I think when you cut it back, but it will push more growth out and it'll look really good this spring and summer. Hopefully, we'll see.
Okay, so I don't know if you can tell or not, but I cut back um, a bunch of this plant and I tried to cut out the branches that were crossing, anything that looked dead. Um, and I tried to clean out the center of the plant because it will, or the bush, it will grow a bunch of new branches right in the center and it would get too crowded if I didn't clean some of those out. So it's cut back quite a bit. I'm excited to see what it does this year. Let's go find my hubby. So Dean has been back here cutting down and pulling out all these little trees that have just grown up. We're leaving all the big trees that were supposed to be here. But they're just a bunch of little ones that have grown up over the years. Um, gosh, that one looks about dead right there. I may need to come down too. Anyway, we have all this like wide open space back there that I want to mow this year and maybe we can use that, but we haven't used it. Sorry for the sun. Anyway. He's burning, you guys can see. His big old pile of branches has burnt down quite a bit. Quite a bit. Yeah. And so soon, very soon, there'll be a big like four foot row all the way down through there. That'll be tilled up and I'll be able to plant some plants. To grow really pretty flowers to cut and make flower arrangements or sell at the farmer's market or bring to church and decorate in the church. I don't know, something like that. Oh. Yuck. All the way down in the water. Do what? You gonna watch you try to Paul Bunyan here? Like rip this tree out, you mean? With your, without the tractor? <laughs> it's stuck. You just need to hook it up to the tractor and pull it. Yeah. I think you drug up another tree down in there that fell into the water. <laughs> That's the problem. Like I like trees along the bank, but they just end up falling into the water because there's no support on their front. Yeah. Well, I think once we get these little trees cut out of here, because we don't need them growing up into big size trees, we have enough big trees at the moment that are healthy, and we don't want to overcrowd them. So if we get these little ones cut out and cleared out, then the big ones will be able to, um, I guess they'll just be healthier, right? More sun, less crowding. We won't have any branch issues with other branches growing in to them. And at some point, we're gonna to get to this pond with all of these cattails, which the pond stretches all the way back, like past where you can see right here, all the way back up into our property a little bit. But if we leave the cattails, they'll eventually dry the pond, pond up completely. And this is a very nice pond. The ducks like this one because it's really still. Anyway, we've gotta get in there and do that at some point. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump on here to wrap this video up for the day. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us as we had this big Saturday work day here at the cottage. Um, it's been a productive and successful day. I have kept up with meals and laundry, got my garden projects, which was the front bed and the pruning of the rosebush done, and then Dean has cleaned up out back and burnt some things down so we can get ready for another garden bed. So yeah for a nice early spring day that was warm and not rainy, which is typical for this time of the year, um, I would call today a very successful day. Thank you guys again for watching and joining me. If you have any questions or comments about anything in today's video, feel free to leave them in the description box below. And if you enjoyed today's video, I would love it if you gave this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you did that and turn the bell on so you get notifications when new videos are available. Okay. I will see you guys in next week's vlog, and in the meantime, check out my blog, and you will find a lot more behind the scenes kinds of posts and photos and things like that over there. Okay, I'll talk to you guys next week, bye.